Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli, and sometimes it's about breaking barriers and building bridges right here at home, looking for individuals that want to live independently and what that looks like when they need DSPs to be involved in their everyday life. With me today, Pam Wally, Executive Director of Georgia Options that makes this happen. Hi, Pam, how you doing? Hi, Gina. I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for being on the show. I want you to tell everybody, what is Georgia Options and how long have you been around? Well, Georgia Options is now in its 32nd year of operation. So we've been around for a while. Wow. Um, and we are a um, nonprofit and we support adults with developmental disabilities who choose to live in their own homes and be involved in their own local communities and we provide the services they need to be able to live their best lives. I love it. Now, do you have different plans for different needs then? Well, actually everything is very individualized. And so what one person's day that we support looks like is totally different from another person's day, just like your day and my day, um, you know, would be very uh, individualized depending on our, our, our own likes and dislikes. So what would you say um, you do for someone who is, you know, you said independent living. Um, are they living like on their own or are they living with family members? I mean, when you think of That's special great... disabilities, it's, di you know, it's yeah. different for everybody. Right. That's a great question. And, and it's a little bit of a, um, uh, it's not exactly lives of independence that we're, um, hoping to help people achieve because truly the human condition is one of interdependence, right? Right. And so that's really what we aim for and the supports that any one person is looking for, um, you know, will we'll dictate what that uh, support looks like. The people that we are currently working with all do live on their own. Um, so, or in their own homes. We have a, a few people who are still living with family with um, aspirations of moving out on their own, but the majority of the people that we support either live in apartments, um, in their own homes. We have a few people who live alone. We have some people who have roommates. So just like the typical, um, you know, adult, the, the people that we support are, um, out there in the community living their lives. You know, it's funny, I always say about my own son, Lyric, that uh, I, I know his strengths and weaknesses. And one of his weaknesses mm -hmm. is to just do a, a menial chore, really, make his bed, right? And so right. I often think when he gets older, what that's going to look like as far as a little bit more support, maybe having someone to come in and help clean the house or just tend to those everyday tasks that you and I take for granted you know, because we just are so used to doing them, but for mm -hmm. uh, young adults on the spectrum or with other special needs, they really do need that help. So do you look to direct support supervisors and providers for that? That's actually what we do is we hire, we recruit, hire, uh, train, oversee, manage the direct support staff who work with the individual. So if um, I have a daughter, Callie, who is, uh, uh, in her late 20s and she she lives in well she has a roommate okay. and she and her roommate live in an apartment here in Athens and um, Callie has her needs are she has a lot of physical needs and so her direct support staff meet her physical needs they help her with activity her her bathing her dressing the things that she needs um, support in um, they help her check her social media every day and, and check her email and other things that 20 year olds do, right? Um, and then her roommate, um, who is not so interested in social media, um, but has other interests, the why and lots of outdoor kind of things, his direct support staff then support him to go out and, and do what makes his life meaningful for him. So it depends on the person. When we get back with Pam Wally, we're going to talk about those direct support providers and why we're seeing such a lack of them here in the state of Georgia and really around the country. Stay with me. Life with the Spectrum would like to thank our friends at Don's Tree Service. Mention that you heard it here and get 10% off. 770-413-TREE. If you'd like to have your business name here, reach us at gcast.com. 
Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. With me today, Pam Wally, the executive director of Georgia Options up there in Athens, Clark County, correct? Right. That's our home base. So how many counties do you serve then, Pam? Actually, we are, because we're a, um, a um, contractor with the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities, we're approved to provide services in 15 counties. So wow. Athens is our home base, but we, ex we are able, approved to preserve, uh, to uh, provide services. Um, like, you know, we were talking about earlier with the DSP situation, the, um, growth is a, a future um, direction for us, but 15 counties is our goal. And let's get back to the DSPs because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody that I've talked to, and I know this is a big platform that will either go, you know, straight up to the Capitol and on the floor, uh, they're just not being paid for what they do. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, when I speak with them directly, some DSPs tell me I can't even afford to pay my rent and I am a single mother, and this was my calling to do this, and yet I could go to Starbucks or McDonald's or pick a place and make more money than I do doing what I'm doing now. So what are your thoughts about that, and are you helping to overcome that there in with Georgia Options? Well, we're hoping to. Um, one of our um, core beliefs as an organization is that we have the calling and we have the responsibility to not only, you know, um, work for the benefit of the people that we s support directly, but also everyone um, who might um, want to have uh, support to live more independently. And so advocacy is, is, is um, something that we believe in and that we work to do. And so um, we're active letter writers and you know we we speak with our um elected representatives we do everything we can to to raise awareness because you're right gina the current um average pay for a direct support professional in the state of georgia is is based on ten dollars an hour um, i know it's ridiculous yeah yeah it's nobody ridiculous. can live on that and so we we have worked um, with the department with DBHDD and with our legislators and a, a, a lot of different partners, um, which is one of the reasons that I'm really optimistic and encouraged thinking that this is going to, to come to pass. I think we will be able to secure uh, better funding so that we can pay our DSPs what they're really worth because they really do a difficult job. Yeah, in 2024, it's got to change. Uh, Pam, it has to. Pam, when it comes to folks that are just entering into um, the world of Medicaid, the world of, you know, all of these different financial paperwork that, that folks have to fill out, and then I'm sure there's a, a small form to fill out with Georgia Options. Is there help? Do your folks there at Georgia Options help families, you know, from from point A to the end of the game kind of thing? We, we do our very best. Um, one of the things, I've, I've been in this role for um, just a, not a year yet, and so um, one of my dreams is that Georgia Options would be able to expand our ability to help families um, who, because families are all different stages. Um, you know, you, you might have a, a 13 year old that you're thinking, oh, you know, one day that's in my, my child's future. Well, you can't wait until one day. That's right. You have to start planning early. Um, and, uh, and, and it's not, it's not an easy process. And so we do what we can. We're, a, um, we have a small administrative staff. And so we do offer, you know, I'll go and speak to groups or we'll take phone calls. We have a website where we try to answer some uh, basic questions about Medicaid and waivers and supported living and self-determination and supported decision making and all the things that we, you know, hold dear to our hearts here at Georgia Options. I think the two main goals is to get that uh, waiver amount of people waiting for funding uh, down from 7,500 this year and also to get our DSPs paid more and what they're worth uh, so that we can right. continue providing the best absolute care and services to those who need it, right? Your daughter's affected, right. my son is affected, so many more people out there know what you and I are talking about right now. With me today, Today, Pam Wally, Executive Director of Georgia Options. When we get back, we're going to find out where you can find them, any galas and fundraisers that might be coming up. Stay with me. I'm Lyra Gillenwater. Thanks for checking out this episode of Life with the Spectrum. 
If you subscribe to the channel, you'll always see the newest episodes when they come out. Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. Pam Wally, the executive director with Georgia Options, with me today. Now, Pam, I know you said you answer some simple questions on your website. Care to share what that is? Um, our website is georgiaoptions.org, and um, I invite anybody to, to take a look. And um, we've just hired a new uh, marketing uh, person who's doing some, some cool work and updating things. But I think your basic information is is there on the website. I like too on your website you showcase individuals that are currently with Georgia Options and right. kind of give a little bit of a backstory about yeah. that which you know sometimes and I always say like the prettiest website wins but when you really start digging into the website people who get it people who understand want to see straight from like who's using Georgia right. Options so I really like that feature on your website. You. Are you also on social we are. We are. And Georgia Options is what you would look for to give a big thumbs up to? Yes. All right. And what yes. about uh, Gallus fundraisers? What, what can people do? How can people provide outside of Giving Tuesday, obviously, which is, you know, past? <laughs> right. Right. Well, we have our um, our annual uh, event on February 1st this year um, at the Classic Center in Athens. Uh, it's a night in Monte Carlo. A lot of fun. Um, you can uh, buy tickets uh, on our website. Um, it's it's uh, a night of getting together, uh, dress up a little bit, uh, have you know have a nice dinner, and um, play games, and then learn more about our organization and 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 like you say, Gina, the people we support because that's really the heart of Georgia Options is the people we support. Do you have some folks from Georgia Options come out um, to maybe, in, you know, welcome people there for the event? Well, you know, this might be what helps to distinguish Georgia Options. We like to think that it's one of the things that distinguishes us. Um, there may be people there. There may not. They're adults. And what they're doing on February 1st really depends on them. Now, I will tell you that my daughter, Callie, we learned um, two years ago when we had our, our first event. Um, she'd never been to a casino, but lo and behold, she really enjoys gambling. So <laughs> I think that Callie will be there, and there probably will be others as well. Definitely families, community members, and we would love to have you and anybody who's interested in learning more about Georgia Options. Oh, I think this is great. You know, I wanted to kind of go back to, I started thinking uh, with Georgia Options, you know, getting those direct support providers in their independent living. Do you also help with finding a place to live or also maybe with job uh, employment and, and helping to secure gainful employment for folks? Yes. Um, well, let me answer that in, in two parts. The, the housing piece, we, um, we can be supportive, but we don't own any homes, we don't own any properties that, um, like a, um, group homes or, or other places. And so I, I can use Callie as an example again, when she made the decision four years ago that she wanted to move to Athens, she and her direct support professionals who had been uh, supporting her in my home, they spent their days coming to Athens and looking around trying to find apartments. And so there's, you know, there's, there's some help there. We don't provide placement, but we help, you know, look if we can. And then as far as employment, that definitely is something that if, if, if people are interested in jobs, um, yes. we want to use the community connections that we have built um, to try to, to find the jobs that are really meaningful. Um, one of our uh, there's a, a, a community partner of ours. I don't know if you've had um, uh, uh, Lovecraft uh, no. on your show, but you maybe should should meet Susan Fontaine, who, um, okay. who works here in Athens. <laughs> Lots of cool things happening in Athens, let me tell you. But Susan um, has a, a nonprofit here in town, and she works with adults who have developmental disabilities who are, she primarily uses the, the, the um, avenues of, of art, um, pottery, music, a lot of creative things. And, and through her studios, she um, helps them to develop skills that are then transferable to jobs. And so some of the people oh. that, that we support, 
go to Lovecraft during the day, and then it's we we partner with um, with the other organization in trying to help find jobs and um, make those community connections. I love this. You know, I was speaking with a mother just the other day, and she was telling me about her 16-year-old son that she pretty much had to go on the job interview with him in order mm -hmm. to kind of help him, in fact, get the job because he was just too, he was full of anxiety. He just kind of froze when, you know, someone asks you a question and you know, like, hey, you kind of feel like it's a fight or flight type deal when you're put in that situation. And so she said, you know, I basically went with him and got him the job. And now he works just great. Now he's opened up. He's warm. He's friendly. He's doing really good. But it oftentimes takes, it takes that additional person just to be there as support or answer any questions that might trip someone up. So it's good to know mm -hmm. that everybody's working in tandem up there in Athens, Clark yeah. County. I like it. And, mm -hmm. and you mentioned 15 other counties or 14 mm -hmm. other counties that you can serve. So that would mean you kind of come as far south as possibly Gwinnett or wh where? We do. We okay. go, um, our, our actually the, the southernmost county that we serve is Morgan or I have to look at a map to be sure, Greene County. Green, Morgan, Walton. We do go over to Gwinnett and then a, um, a few of the metro counties. We do right now have um, people that we support in, in Gwinnett. The majority of the people that we have, um, that we're working with right now are closer to Athens. Like a lot of the world, I think when the, when the pandemic happened, we, um, we, we didn't shut down operations, but we, we had to, to, close in a little bit. Correct. Yeah. And um, I'm really hopeful, you know, going back to the to the DSP issue, the only thing that is preventing us from expanding to all the counties that we're able to support is being able to find workers to, to you know, provide the services. Um, we, it's, it's sort of a heartbreaking thing to get requests from families who want us, want our services, want our brand of support, and we want to do it and know we can do it if we only had the ability to hire and, and, and keep the DSPs. So that's our, that's our dilemma right now is, is the DSP shortage. We'll work on that in 2024. I have a feeling like good things are coming uh, for yes. DSPs as well as all of the people who are on that darn wait list. <laughs> Pam Wally, Executive Director with Georgia Options, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Wow, that night in Monte Carlo sounded so much fun. I can't wait for it. Maybe I should get Pam's daughter, Callie, to teach me how to play roulette. I hear she likes to gamble. <laughs> Again, you can find your tickets for a night in Monte Carlo up there in athens Clark County uh, for February 21st at georgiaoptions.org. Thank you so much for checking in to Life with the Spectrum. It's great to know that people north, south, east, and west of the city and in communities abroad that are really making a difference in the world of disabilities. And if there's somebody that I need to be speaking with, make sure you comment below. Send me an email, gina at gcast.com, or head to the website, gcast.com, and let me know who I need to be talking to in your community that's making a difference. You know, we're going to take a quick little holiday break for a couple weeks. Weeks. My son is out of school, so I'm in full mom mode. I know you get that. And uh, we'll be back after the new year with more great people and more great episodes with Life with the Spectrum. Happy holidays. See ya. Bye.